Hello and welcome back to the PG house. Today it's just me and Freddie and we've decided to actually Hello. sit. Hello, <laughs> sorry. And we've decided we're actually going to sit on the sofa today rather than just in front of it. We're going to be a bit more relaxed today. So as I said at the beginning of last week's video, that this week is Father's Day. Yay! Yay. Happy Father's Day. To Happy Father's Day to everyone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so we are thinking about the story of the prodigal son. Now, before we have the story of the prodigal son, we're going to have a chat and we're going to have a question. And my question this week is, have you ever done something that you've later regretted? Have you ever done something that afterwards you've thought, oops, no, that wasn't a good idea. Have a chat, have a think, and we'll come back together in just a moment. Great, I hope you had some good chats and some good discussions and um, there's loads of different things and I'm sure that conversations could have ranged from the very small to the very big. But as we know, in the story of the prodigal son, the, prodig um, the prodigal decided that he'd had enough and he was going to run away, but he came home after he'd realised that he'd made a big mistake. Really, in the prodigal son, we see a picture of sometimes a little bit of ourselves. So this time we've had some help retelling the story and here's the video to show. This is the story of the prodigal son, or as Charlie Mackesy says, the running father. You can find the story in Luke 15 verses 11 to 32, but this morning I'm gonna be retelling the story with the help of the PG boys. Um, for the purposes of ability, um, you'll find that Freddie and Bertie have swapped places as to the older and younger son. So, as Jesus was teaching, people were still grumbling about the fact that Jesus was hanging around with the wrong kinds of people, the kinds of people who made bad choices. So Jesus told them another story. Once, there was a man who had two sons. <laughs> One day, the younger son, who's the younger son? Ah. One day the younger son decided he'd had enough and went to the father and said, I want the money you leave me when you die. I don't want to wait. So the father agreed to split the money between his two sons. So after a few days, the younger son had packed up all his belongings and moved to a far away country. When he got there, he said, now no one can tell me how to live. I can do things my own way. And he chose to spend all his money on parties and friends and generally things that God probably wouldn't be happy with. But after a while, all his money had run out. All his money's gone. And then to make it worse, a famine came, which meant that there wasn't enough food for anybody to eat. Now if you were poor like the prodigal son was, you were really hungry. Oh, the prodigal son, he was so hungry, his tummy rumbled. Eventually, he persuaded a farmer to give him a job. And the farmer sent him into the fields to go and look after the pigs. Eventually, the boy was so hungry, the son was so hungry, that he thought even the pig food looked tasty. One night, as he was trying to sleep, tossing over and over with thoughts in his head, he decided 
as he came to his senses and thought to himself, in my father's home, even the hired servants have enough to eat. I know, I'm going to go home and tell my father how sorry I am that I've wronged him and I know I've hurt him and I've done things that he wouldn't be pleased with. And I know I'm not worthy to be called his son, but please take me on as one of your servants. So the next morning, the son got up and began his long journey home. But what the son didn't know is that while he'd been gone, the father hadn't forgotten him. In fact, he'd been watching and waiting, hoping that his son would return. So, while his son was still a long way off, the father spotted him and ran as fast as he could. Overwhelmed with love and compassion, he hugged him so tight. The son began his prepared speech, but the, so but the father shouted over him, Quick, bring me a finest robe and put it on my son. Bring me a ring for his finger <laughs> and sandals for his feet. For my son was lost, but now he's found. I thought he was dead, but it's like he's been brought back to life. Meanwhile, the so older son had come in from the field. He could see the party that was happening and he asked what was happening. And he was told that his younger brother had come home and the father was throwing a party. This made the son very grumpy. Grumpy face. So the father came out to him and had a chat. <laughs> the, old, the older son said, Dad, I've always been here and I've always done the right things. I've never left you and you've never thrown a party for me. But the father explained, I love you so much and I'm so thankful that you've always been here but your younger brother was lost and now he's found he was dead and it's like he's come back to life. I'm sure um, you'll understand that we took a little bit of artistic license <laughs> with the retelling of our story but we did have good fun giving it a go. Maybe that's a challenge for you. Maybe you could make a video as a family of you retelling a Bible story. But back to the prodigal son. One of my favourite lines in the prodigal son is, and the son came to his senses. He'd gone off, hadn't he? And he'd made some really big mistakes. What are some of the things that he'd done, Freddie? What had he done? Do you remember? What did he spend his money on? Parties parties and all sorts of things that people shouldn't really waste their money on. And it wasn't even his money, was it? Whose money was it? Can you remember? It was the father's. Now normally the money that the younger son got was something that people get if somebody leaves them something when they die. But the son was so impatient that he went to the father and said, I want that money now. And it was a bit like telling the father that he wished he was dead and that he could have the money now, which is really sad. The younger son definitely didn't make some good choices. But while he was away, he remembered everything about his father. And I think it's a really important thing to remember that the son wouldn't have gone home if he didn't think that his, son would have his father would have welcomed him in some way. So here's your next question. What is the best welcome you have ever received.
I was just sharing with Freddie that actually one of the best welcomes I get, and it doesn't matter how long I've been gone, whether I've been gone for five minutes to get something from the bottom of the stairs, or whether I've been gone for a couple of hours, when I walk through the door, if the boys haven't been with me, Bertie and Freddie literally run to the door, and the same for Daniel when he's been out at work and comes home, they get so excited to see us again, it certainly is a brilliant welcome. Because that's really the point of the story. The point of the story isn't necessarily for us to dwell on all the bad and wrong choices that the younger son made. But it's about the father, isn't it? It's about the rushing father, the running father. As he saw him from a long way off, he came running as fast as he could and embraced his son. Now that leads us nicely onto our craft um, this week. What we've got this week is we're going to make a hugger, okay? You know how I feel about hugs. But here we go. So I'm going to hold it up so a bit close to the camera. So what we've got, I'll show you the made one and then I'll show you the bits you need. So here we go. What it is, you can see is a nice couple of hands and a face. We could add some hair with some wool. And then the Bible verse in the middle, it just says, And while he was still a long way off, the father ran and embraced him. Here we go. So what you need to make one of these if you want to make a hugger is a long piece of paper here we go i've got a nice a3 piece of paper that i've cut in half long ways and then you need a piece of white paper for you to draw around your hands and that's what you're going to stick onto the ends here so what you do is you fold it in the middle like this and then you stick your hands on the end and then finally the last bit is if i can find them here they are I have a little bit, it's basically a circle with a rectangle underneath and you can write anything on there from the story that you write. You could write, and the sun came to his senses, or you could simply write, isn't it amazing that God loves us? And then you just stick that on the inside so that it becomes the head and then the verse. And there you have it. You have your very own hug thing. <laughs> just to remind you how much that God loves you. Because as I said, that really is the point of the story. The point of the story isn't so much about the, the bad choices that the son made, but about actually about the grace and the love that the father showed by running to his son. Not just so that he could say, yeah, OK, I'll pay you to be one of my servants, but actually to restore him as a son. Now, last week we did the story of the lost sheep. The lost sheep, very good. And we looked and what did the shepherd do? The shepherd had 100 sheep, 99 were safe and one had gone missing. And what did the shepherd do, Fred? What did he do? Can you remember? He went looking. There's a theme for you, isn't it? The shepherd went looking. And what was the father doing while the son was gone? He was watching and looking. God, as we heard last week, is always looking after you and looking over you and just like the father in our story today as soon as we say that we are sorry as soon as we turn back to him God rushes to us and embraces us and helps us to know how much he loves us so one final question for you have a think have a chat with your family or have a think on your own if you're on your own what is it that you want to turn towards God to today? What is it you want to turn away from so that you can turn and embrace the Father? Have a chat, have a think, and we'll come back together in a few minutes. So I hope you managed to have a chat. Maybe it's something that actually you don't want to chat about out loud with other people maybe it's something you want to quietly reflect on in your own personal prayer times because it can be quite a personal thing can't it and that's okay and that is absolutely fine god hears our hearts and our minds and he knows and loves us more than more and better than we know and love ourselves so all that's left for me to do is pray um so if you want to put your hands together and close your eyes, that is fine. Um, especially for the children. If you want to do a God Squad Amen at the end, that's great too. Okay. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are so good and so gracious to us. Thank you that you love us so much and that you are interested in us and that you don't leave us on our own. Thank you that you are watching and waiting for us. Lord, we do pray that those things that we need to turn away from and turn towards you with, Lord, we help and um, pray that you'd give us the courage and that you would help us to do that. Thank you, Lord, for everything you are and how much you love us. Amen. Ready? Amen. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, um, thank you for joining with us again today. Um, next week, we're going to be looking at the parable of the talents. So maybe this week you could be having your own family talent shows. Who knows? See you next week and thank you for joining us. Bye.